Step outside on a clear night and look up. What do you see? Well, obviously one sees the sky. What's that? <laughs> where does that end? Where does it begin and where does it end? Space. Good luck figuring that one out. That's baffled us since uh, the beginning of time. You might be able to formulaically explain uh, or scientifically explain what space and the the sky what, or outer space is, um, but you can't wrap your head around that. It's uh, well, at least most people can't. Um, but you can't walk around with that kind of worry or that kind of. Uh, preoccupation in your mind. You can't exist in the world like like that. Or you end up like this guy here. He's carrying a shield over the top of his head uh, like this because he's afraid of what the sky is. He thinks about it a little bit too much. Um, we uh, think that uh, the person who obsesses too much about things that really one can't do anything about and aren't really all that important is a bit, you know, a bit crazy. You, why worry about what the sky really is? What difference does it make? Uh, so we sort of file these things away in our minds, in their own little place. The sky is just something that's up there. That's all. And that's fine. That's how we get through the day in this irrational plane of existence that we're in. Um, but make no mistake, all that we've done is we've played a trick on ourselves. We've just sort of said, okay, we don't know what that is. It's obviously not harmful or not as harmful as we might think. Therefore, we just stop thinking about it and we stop worrying about it because it just is. We don't know what it is, but there it is. It's this void. Um, likewise, if we want to do something in this world, um, if we want to exist in this plane of existence, there are certain things that we've um, latched onto or uh, cooked up even that allow us to exist and to do things efficiently in this plane of existence. I have in my hand here a ruler. Now, it's uh, one of those annoying metal ones. I don't know why I even bought this darn thing. I can't stand metal rulers. Uh, it's got inches up here and centimeters down here. Now, that... Uh, ruler allows us to do all kinds of things. That ruler has numbers on it so we can count the number of uh, spatial um, units in order to build things like furniture, uh, factories, um, uh, instruments uh, to perform brain surgery, all this sort of thing. Um, little tiny measurements to measure anything uh, make life a lot more efficient on this plane of existence. But make no mistake uh, there's no such thing as an inch. There's no such thing as a centimeter. It doesn't exist. Um, but again, we play a trick on ourselves. We invent these units of measurement in order to make things work. Just because I'm using uh, a slide rule or, or, uh, or a tape measure to make something, and I'm using inches, and say I build a little table. I, I'm an amateur uh, furniture worker here. I, I'm very bad at it. My furniture is horrible, but I like to do it. It's just something that's fun. And um, I can actually put together a piece of furniture. And you, it's very difficult to do that unless you have uh, something to measure. Something to measure angles, something to measure distances, uh, that sort of thing. But at the end of the day, I get a nice piece of furniture. And I've used these things called centimeters. I generally go metric. Um, but all that I've done is I've created something that allows me to do something. I haven't actually established that these things called inches or centimeters or degrees actually exist. They don't. But I play a trick on myself and bingo, suddenly it's way easier to do the task that I'm attempting to do. We do that all the time. Make no mistake, Inches and units of space don't exist. Ultimately, numbers don't even exist. We have a decimal system because of the number of digits that we've got. That's it. We have ten fingers. Therefore, we based our, uh, our uh, numerical system, which, with which we've uh, ultimately uh, split the atom, on the fact that we've got ten digits. <laughs> so that, that'll tell you what exactly uh, how actually real our mathematical system is. It's not. It's just something that we've invented to, to overcome certain problems. Same thing for this. 
we've got this. Uh, I've got this clock thing now. Today we're pretty much clock neurotics. We live by the clock. We uh, uh, every minute of every day is. Uh, supposedly planned. I'm horribly disorganized, so my life isn't like that. But I've seen the way most people do. They run around with their electronic calendars, and they've always got their styluses out about what they're going to do next and all that sort of thing. I never understood how people manage to live like that, but most people do. I have to be to work on time all the time. Okay, I have to keep appointments. That I manage to do. But make no mistake, there's no such thing as 3 o'clock. There's no such thing as uh, the 14th of January, and there's no such thing as 2012, the year 2012. It's all completely arbitrary. We've invented all of these things. We've even actually invented the concept of time. We don't know what it is. In fact, it doesn't even make sense when you think about what time is. The past is on one side, the future is on the other, and there's this point, uh, almost the same point as where, say, a pure circle in, it can touch a pure uh, straight line, called the present. Where is the present? It doesn't really exist, but we have to assume that it does exist or we can't, we can't, uh, we can't function in this plane of existence. Again, that's a little trick we've played on ourselves. Make no mistake, that's all we've done. Okay, I understand that. that I'm not saying that we stop doing any of this. That's crazy. You can't live like that. But you can actually fall into some fairly lazy habits. You can assume, say, um, you can assume, you can fall into the, the way of thinking that says that space, time, and the way that we measure them are real. That mathematics is real. It is incontrovertible reality. That really isn't that big of a deal, but people can fall into that kind of thinking. Um, the only way that it, can, that it actually causes problems is when you tend to compare it to other people's philosophies who don't actually require these things, because you tend to look at people like that as lunatics. I'm a prime example of that. Uh, I see these things all the time, more or less, as illusions that we've invented. Um, and a lot of people simply think, if you should uh, see how uh, most of my friends, uh, the few that I have, actually uh, think when I start spilling off my uh, philosophy of time and space. They just go, hmm, and I, I'm used to that, I don't care. Um, but most people actually believe that time, space, hours, minutes, uh, years, months, this sort of thing, inches, that all this actually exists. Um, and it leads to a certain blindness when dealing with people who actually attempt to look beyond these constructs that we've made to create reality. The antinatalist position uh, and one of its uh, uh, one of its um, uh, one of its foremost intellectuals, uh, Mr. David Benatar, falls into that habit horribly and with fatal results, if you ask me. He has posited the existence or the necess necessity of what he calls potential human beings. These are people who have not been born yet, who have not been who don't actually exist in this plane of existence, but in some way, some philosophical or moral way, they do exist because they're on the other side of life or out there waiting to be drawn in against their will by living human beings. They are potentials, we are actuals. They are potential human beings, we are actual human beings. The assumption being that the potential wants to stay on the other side or um, ought to stay on the other side because there's nothing good on this side at all or there's more bad than good in here. So non-existence is better than existence. We've been through all of this before. But when you, <laughs> when you start looking into this philosophy, it's kind of... It, it, it gets badly derailed and it, it um, illustrates the kind of lazy thinking that makes people believe again that um, miles and inches and hours actually exist. That the decimal system is some sort of absolute. It's just lazy thinking. It's just a bunch of assumptions that when you really actually look at them start to fall to pieces. It's the it, it's the assumption that the sky is up there, it's infinite, end of story. That's all that it is. It's an infinite thing that's up there, and um, we might as well stop thinking about it. Uh, it's just taking it for granted and forgetting that we're actually fooling ourselves. I understand the concept of potential human beings, but what, what I'd like to ask is, what is my relationship to these potential human beings right now as an individual? Do I have a relationship with them as 
me an individual and to them as individuals? Um, when, let's say, um, I am involved in the creation of a human being, and I pull one of the potentials out, are they differentiated, by the way, when they're potentials? Are they, uh, is there a finite or an infinite number of them out there? When I pull one uh, from non-existence into existence, um, have I lessened their number in there? Have I, um, what is the relationship now of this potential to the other potentials who is now, this potential who is now an actual to the other potentials? Um, what is uh, the relationship of all the potentials to all of us actuals? Uh, they seem to, potentiality, potential human beings seem to just exist out there infinitely. They never started to exist and they will never not exist as potentials. They're infinite at some, in some sense of the word because they're outside of space and time. But still, Mr. Benatar says that they uh, actually exist in some way. I'm afraid that this is uh, a gigantic error in reasoning. I understand that, that Mr. Benatar is a respected intellectual in, in philosophy, but he simply is making a huge, huge, huge error um, that unfortunately contradicts itself in so many ways when he's talking about potential human beings. I want to know if any antinatalist can tell me how these potentials exist, what, they, what their relationship is to us here in the actual world, uh, potentials to actuals, how many potentials there are out there, when they started to exist, when they will stop existing, because I am finite. I will eventually stop existing as who I am. There was a time before when I existed and when I didn't exist. I want to know if the potentials are the same way. You see, when you start asking questions like that, the good Mr. Benatar inevitably sounds like he's trying to get you to believe in God. Ironic, isn't it? Thank you.